Now, we talk about Tony McCoy and obviously Sandown is going to be the end of what's been very hard actually to find the, the words for the career and what he's achieved uh, in his time. He's going to be crowned again uh, champion jockey for the 20th time. He's been champion jockey from 1996, from the first year he turned professional. No other sports person has achieved quality like that. It's unbelievable that the, the winner championship 20 years in a row, I mean, the amount of dedication... Uh, to, to win a, a, a champion jockey's title over the jumps, you're looking probably at 175 winners. If you class into that, McCoy's rode over 209 of his 20 championships. It's just the level of dedication you have to be in to, to, to put in to achieve that is unbelievable. I don't think the general public would really understand. It's the going out racing every morning, taking your having a look at your potential rides for the week, uh, going out and then getting, getting your tactics off the trainer and re really trying to get the best out of every ride you take. And of course, his stature, keeping the weight. You know, it's okay, there's a lot of other smaller jockeys like that, but he, you know, he's, he's, a, he's found it difficult in the past, is to turn around and to keep it. The dedication's incredible. Well, that's it. Well, just in the past week there with the Scottish National, uh, his, his boss, J.P. McManus, paid a lot of money to get a horse called Gallant Oscar, which would have been favourite if it had ran, and McCoy couldn't, wasn't able to take the 10-stone the ten one. Uh, the, the, the amount of effort he needed to put in to, to maintain, a, maintain a ride and weight, I mean, he's, he's, he's rode winners at 9-12 in his, in his jump square, which is unbelievable. For, for an adult, uh, and, and as he says, he'll, he'll be looking forward to maybe a couple of burgers or two in his retirement. <laughs> his wife Chanel, and I would say I presume I speak for she speaks for all the family that she said she would have traded all his winners uh, just to get him home safe this week. And I say everybody in racing and everybody in sport would uh, agree with those sentiments. Well, that's it. Everybody would love to see him come home safely. Uh, the, the farewell tour, as has been dubbed, I'm sure has been a great strain on him, but he's handled it all excellently. And he hasn't turned down an autograph, posed for thousands of photos as he said goodbye to every race course around Britain and Ireland. Now he says goodbye at Sandown and it's going to be a sellout. Yeah, I believe 18,000 fans are all there, mainly to wave McCoy goodbye. Uh, the race course has named the race in his honour, the, the AP McCoy Celebration Chase, which is his last confirmed ride so far as Mr Moe in that race. Uh, it, it, it was also the horse that he was on when he announced his retirement, when he won the Game Spirit Chase there in February. So probably a fit, a fit and final winner for him. You saw a fitting final winner. Can he do it? It would like it would be a, like a dream, wouldn't it? Oh, de definitely it would be. I mean, although he, he could ride on through the day, but if that race, Mister Moe's a four to one chance, uh, it is a great, great chance to win the race, and it, it would just be a, a nice story if he could win this final race on the the horse that he announced his retirement on. Would you expect a lot of punters who will just go into uh, the shops on Saturday and go, well, uh, Tony McCoy's and Mister Moe? Uh, I want to be part of history. I want to. I want to back him. I want to put a few pounds to him, and I hope to God he wins. Oh yeah, de definitely. And, and also for anybody who doesn't fancy McCoy horses, uh, May McLean's here will will be refunding any money on if you back a horse and finish a second in AP McCoy winner at Sandown on Saturday. We're going to miss him, aren't we? Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, he's he's such a he's one of the very few figures in racing that tra that transforms into the general public, which probably came from winning Sports Personality of the Year, uh, and there's very few like that. And we probably need we need more ambassadors to step up now, to, to fill his gap. Well, of course, he's the only jockey has ever achieved that uh, that laudable uh, victory in the BBC Sports Personality of the Year. Chris, you know you've been involved in the game. You love the game. You're involved in, in sport here in McLean's all the time. Uh, there's been so many magical moments for Tony McCoy. What's your magic moment for him? Well, the, the majority of people will say the Grand National in 2010. For myself personally, I think the 4,000th winner. Uh, it was a stereotypical McCoy ride with two, two hurdles to jump, had it absolutely no chance, and he, had, he drove it home, uh, obviously, obviously safely, but he drove it home, 4,000th winner, and that just sort of, it just sort of signifies how, how much dedication and how excellent he's been through, through the whole 20 year career. Interesting you say that, his wife Chanel was on BBC Radio 5 last week, and uh, whenever she was asked for the high point, she said it was that because all the family was there, everybody was there, and uh, to achieve that, she says, was just simply incredible. That's it. It's unbelievable. I mean, it, it was sort of a we were waiting for it a couple of days, if I remember correctly, uh, and they had everybody there. It was it was a winner for J.P. McManus as boss. It was trained by John Joe O'Neill, so it was just a great story, a great tie up to what is now a great career. Will people not involved in horse racing will they only realise how good he was whenever he's not there anymore? Well, that, there'll be nobody who'll who'll get that level of winners. I mean, no Richard Johnson will be probably happy to see him go because he's been const, constantly <laughs> right. riding 160 winners a season and getting He'd nowhere near the farewell note. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, uh, pe people who even even punters are punting every day. I mean, the first thing they'll go in if you're at a jump speed is you'll look to see what Tony McCoy's on, 
and there's just there isn't really many that there's Ruby Walsh who, who doesn't write as much as now as he used to. Barry Garrity's probably the next one, but Tony McCoy was dedicated. He was he was writing seven days a week for probably 48, 48 or forty nine weeks a year, uh, and there's just there's nobody else that, that really will be able to fill that gap. Potentially, there's some younger jockeys coming through who will step up, but I think it'll be more of a by committee filling the gap with McCoy rather than one individual coming through. It was almost godlike when we were in Cookstown that night that McLean's had him over as a guest prior to Cheltenham a couple of seasons ago, yeah. and the crowds were just, it was almost as if, you know, can I just touch Tony McCoy here, I know. You know, because he was a bit special. That's it, Logan was interested in me and you, everybody just wanted to meet <laughs> McCoy. Big fair shot, Chris, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so look, Mr Mole, is that the one we all have to go out and, again, I'm, I'm being advisedly here now with you because you told us all to go out and do cause of causes, and I, I think he's still running around uh, in three, but... Uh, well, what about McCoy and Mr. Mole? Well, Mr. Mole has a, has a good opportunity. There's some good horses in the race. You have uh, Sprinter Sagra, which won two champion chases, and Sarda Grugy, who won the 2014 champion chase. So it's a very tough race. But Mr. Mole's an up and coming horse, had a very good season, and I definitely have a, have a good chance of 4 to 1. Well, can I ask the most naive question ever from a sporting journalist? Coming to the last, and there's three or four of them in the last, and Mr. Mole's there, will the other three slow up? Absolutely not. No way. <laughs> every every jockey's out there. I mean, every jockey's out there to, to win. Uh, the the owners to keep the ride well by. I mean, the fairy tale will be, the fairy tale animal will be brilliant, uh, and I think he'll have a, a couple of opportunities to get a last winner at Sandow. But uh, if <laughs> every jockey will be riding for their life in every race there on Saturday, you can believe that. So Sandow on Saturday, it's McCoy's day. That's it. It's all about Tony McCoy, and I would love to see him sign off for the winner.